welcome back everyone to your Oracle SQL tutorial series. This video we are going to be talking a bit more about constraints, but I'm going to try and be a little bit more specific and a little bit more practical by actually applying these to a real table. So we already have this users table down here with a user ID column and a username column. And just for fun, we're going to go over the SQL to create this table. So we start with a create table command and then we give it a name and then inside of parentheses is where we put the columns. So we have a user ID, which is of data type number, and then we have a username, which is of type varchar2, and it has a total of 50 characters. So literally, we just created a table in like 20 seconds. Now, if you already have this table created, you're going to need to remember to run the drop table command. And what that's going to do is delete the table and all of the data in it. So be careful with this command. But for us, it's fine because we're just learning. So let's run this and see if it works. And it says table users created. But the problem is here, we literally don't have any constraints on this table, which that's bad. So let's go in and add some. We'll start with the username. We're gonna add the constraint not null and also unique. And usually that's fine for those adding them in as attributes. It's when we get to the primary key and foreign key when people start to be a little bit more picky. And specifically, we often want to name our constraints. So we'll start without naming our constraint. And the way you do that is just saying primary key right after the column. This will work, but when we create this, and let's go to our table, do a refresh, and we'll go to constraints. Oh, it's gross. Look at those names. Oh, it makes me want to puke. That is just hideous. <laughs> we do not want that. So to name our constraints, all you have to do is add the constraint keyword here and then give it a name. And by convention, we'll name it the table name and then underscore PK. Okay, so you can see here, there is the user's PK constraint. That is beautiful. Now there's a third way to do this, and usually this is the preferred way, and that's to add all of the constraints at the end of the table, almost as if they're their own column. So the way you do that is just take all of this, and then you can just cut that, come down here, and literally add it as if it's its own column, but then inside of parentheses after primary key, you have to say what column you're talking about. That is the most complex way of adding a primary key, but often that's the way people want to do it. It's really up to you guys, but that's what I'm going to go for in this video. So let's run that and see how it works. So that was a quick rundown on how to add a primary key. In future videos, we'll get on to foreign keys, but for now, primary keys will do. So thanks guys. Please be sure to subscribe and click like, and I will see you in the next video.